unfortunately for him. So he'll be out. Played well. Uh, great guy. And uh, we appreciate him very much. Uh, the other stuff, none of it looks serious at this point. And uh, we'll be working for next week. What questions do you have? John, uh, on the, the two Tyreek Hill long touchdowns on the other sides, um, it looked like the corners were looking for safety help. Can you, can you go through and uh, explain the, the breakdown and maybe coverages on, on those plays? Yeah, I mean, they were just blown coverages, basically, you know, in the sense of uh, we didn't play the technique right on the, on the post to our defensive left. You got to stay on top of that as a corner. You got to stay on top of that as a safety. It's three deep coverage. Those guys know that. And then uh, the other one was we didn't have anybody in the deep half. That was a miscommunication, if you want to call it that. And uh, the deep half player didn't realize he was a deep half player and he needs to get back there. So uh, those were mistakes. As you, as you try to correct those, is it, is it more about teaching the individual players or is it more about teaching them as a, as a group? Ah, it's both. You know, I mean, it all goes together. It's, it's, you know, you have those kind of things in the back end and we've had those things before. And, You've got, you know, I mean, there's certain guys that got to grow up fast. I mean, they got to grow up. You know, they're young guys. They're rookies. They're playing for the first time. They know that. I'm sure they took responsibility for it. You know, the coaches take responsibility for it. Uh, we've all got to take responsibility for it. We got to look at everything. So we'll look at the way we're preparing, you know, how we're, how we're walking through, how we're teaching, how we're repping in practice, things like that. Those are things that, you know, should never happen. I mean, they're below the line. You know, I did not expect those things to happen in this game. But... I also understand that we got some young guys back there. You know, we're throwing we're throwing guys who are out there for the first time in an NFL game against some fast players, you know, and things are moving fast and the game's on the line. And uh, you know, that can happen. So hey, if we had a veteran group back there, I'd I'd be more concerned about it. But I think those young guys are gonna learn fast. The same thing goes in the red zone. You know, you gotta stay with your man when you're in man coverage and you can't be staring at the quarterback and let your guy separate from you. And that's basic fundamental stuff that we work on all the time. Easier said than done but got to be done. So we'll work on those things, and uh, you know, we don't, we're not blaming anybody. We just got to keep working and get better at that stuff. Coach, um, we had miscommunications in Collins team with the players yesterday, um, but they really didn't elaborate on it. What, what, was the, what was the miscommunication coming in? Was it the huddle or the back end? No, it's just it's assignments and being in the right spot. You know, sometimes it's jumping around. Sometimes it's not being back there, like I just said, deep half. So I think I just explained it as well as I'm going to explain it in detail. But... You've got to be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. You've got to maintain your leverage on the routes. You know, when you're a deep player and there's, there's guys running vertical, you know, you're a deep player. You, you stay deep. You don't, you don't get nosy on a crossing route when you've got a deep route running up on you. That's just the way it works as a deep middle third player. You're a deep half player. You've got to know you're a deep half player and be back there. We can't leave the deep half uncovered, you know. So we show them a blitz and we're running out. Someone's got to be back there. And that's the responsibility of the, of the, of the person and the coach to – all of us to get that done. So we're, we're all in that together. I mean, you know, it's easy to point fingers. It's easy to talk about, you know, who's at fault or whatever. That's not what we're about. You know, you can, you can listen to all the talking heads outside that want to make all the statements they want to make, okay? You can make all the statements they want to make, but they're not coaching anybody right now. And this is the way it works in this league. I mean, you look all around the league. You've got challenges, you know, and you've got you've to keep coaching guys through the course of a long season. And things turn, you know, especially when you have good young players who you like and trust. And we really like those guys, and we really we trust those guys, and they're going to learn from their mistakes. And um, sometimes lessons are learned the hard way. You know, I don't know how many times in National Football you come out there with a bunch of young guys, and all of a sudden they're doing everything perfectly right. And when you get challenged with you know really good players, you know in critical situations, it goes bad and it's painful. It hurts, but you know what? You remember those lessons. You know, you remember them as coaches. I'm sure all the guys out there who coach can vouch for the same thing. You know, when they've had painful experiences, you learn from them as coaches, and you learn from them as players, and you learn from them as reporters, don't you? So we'd all be wise to remember that. Coach, how important, with that said, is veteran leadership this week? Oh, yeah. In practice. It's very important, but it always is. It was important last week, too. You know, no question about that. But it's, it's critically important. We just, it's not, like, it's not like the end of the world. I mean, these are not complicated things. You know, these are all things that have been coached and are in the system, and everybody knows it after it happens. Oh, that's right. I've got to get that right. But... In the heat of battle, when those routes are running up on you really fast and things are flashing in front of your eyes, that's what football is. That's what makes it so tough. It's not easy. It's not lines on a paper. So um, you just keep working on them. Hey, John. Um, last week, with a lot of noise with this cover zero, and despite all the loss, Greg Roman showed that he can be very creative in offense making 38 points. Well, yeah. 
31. They, uh, but uh, I, I tell you, they, uh, they did. I mean, that was a big plus. That was something that was much talked about. We talked about it a lot. I mean, it was important for us. It was something that really mattered. And, uh, you know, we were a little edgy about it, you know. And to see the guys come out and execute, the plan was excellent. They executed very well. We won the vast majority of those battles, you know, and put up a bunch of points. A lot of big plays. That's what happens uh, against those kind of defenses. So it was good to see. We also had some easy completions for, you know, eight, nine-yard gains, too. Uh, to see us throw, catch, get in the right play, protect it. Offensive line did a great job with protection the whole, the whole night. Very encouraging. Uh, a lot of very encouraging things. John, how did Marcus Peters get his first game in like 20 months? How did he uh, fare and get through the game? Hey, he's good. You know, he's pretty good. I think it's, uh, it's kind of the first game. You know, we had him on a, a bit of a pitch count, uh, as you guys saw. And, uh, you know, he's a player, too, he's going to want back for sure. You know, there's going to be. He's going to, you know, feeling the speed of the game a little bit, I think. He's going to look at that and go, okay, now i got to keep taking the next step forward. But he's a veteran player. He's one of the most talented corners in the league. You know, he certainly has been. And so, you know, just keep working him back into that form, and I'm excited that he's back out there playing. John, with uh, J.K. Dobbins, do you have a timetable on when he might return? Yeah, uh, I think it's been week to week the last couple of weeks, so, you know, that's what it is. When he's ready, he'll be out there. John, did you see something specific with my Right. Well, that's a good question. Well, Chris, Chris did a good job. You know, we were taking, we took it back to the field, which is a little bit of a changeup for us. Um, you know, there's some certain things that they did that we thought maybe would give us a chance to, to get some space over there. But really, more than anything, it's a base return for us, and they executed it really well. You know, you don't get too many balls to, to return in this league. It's really tough to get even chances. So when you get a chance like that, and you make the most of it. You know, you're, you're happy with that, you know, and we'll probably get a lot more touchbacks after that, but we'll be ready. You know, we'll keep practicing and trying to be ready to execute kickoff return if it comes up, when, when it comes up again. Coach, when it comes to the uh, carry distribution, how do you guys go about the that up? Is it like you, you like certain running backs and certain types of plays? And as far as Justice Hill, is he a guy that you think, assuming J.K. Dobbins doesn't play, so is he a guy that could get more? Yeah, well, first thing, Justice absolutely has done a great job. You know, he's thinking, I think he's looked good all through the preseason. Uh, came back from his injury exceptionally well. Uh, all of his numbers are way up, even better than he was before. And he's running hard. And, um, yeah, Justice Hill, you know, thumbs up. The arrow's up. Um, and then the rest of it, you know, we have certain carries for certain guys. You know, certainly certain, certain runs are tagged for certain players. So we try to get him in there. Sometimes you bring a guy out because he gets – a little tired or something, you try to stay fresh. And the other thing is who's doing well. You know, I'm, that's what I'm looking at right now. I mean, we've got to get a running game going, and I think the running backs are a big part of that. You know, running backs have a lot to do with how good your run game is. And uh, we need those guys to help make our run game better. Hey, John, in uh, run protection, I think uh, you have the answer when, when Nick Wolf can be 100%. Come back. Yeah, he's, he's, he's close to 100% right now. I think Nick is doing well. Um, there's a good chance he'll be out there this week. We'll, we'll just have to see. We've got some guys who are doing well. Josh Oliver's been playing pretty darn good. You know, so it just has to do with the right formula right now. I think we're, we're blessed with some talent there. So you don't have to rush Nick back necessarily. But I wouldn't mind putting Nick out there at all right now, the way he's practicing. So we'll see. Part of the run game struggles to do with how defense is key and on the Ravens running game as a whole and Lamar Jackson and what they're kind of showing. Is that part of what you see as, a, as an issue? Well, this week, I think situationally, they loaded up the run game. You know, they did a good job, and, uh, and, the, and the Jets did it too. You know, and they're, and they're both really good fronts. You know, we're going to see another really good front this week. Um, they, they'll play some base, but they'll play a lot of sub, but they put big people on the field, and they play, you know, eyes on the ball type of a coverage a lot of times. So they're very sound. Very disciplined team. So they're going to have a plan to stop the run as well. And really what it's been up to this point is bodies. You know, it's been, it's been bodies they've been committing to it. And that's probably helped our passing game. It also helped us because these guys put a lot of bodies close to the line of scrimmage. It helps us get a, you know, a couple of really big runs, especially the touchdown run. So once you get through that second line of defense, maybe it's two level, but it's not three level. And, you know, your guy like Lamar or any back could go the whole way. So... That's part of it, but we've, you know, we've got to do a better job in critical situations. I mean, the biggest, the biggest disappointment on offense was, you know, not scoring on the first drive down there on the one-yard line and then not getting the fourth down, you know. Those two plays, those the four plays on the, first, on the first down down there, first and one, first and goal at the one, et cetera, 
and then the fourth down, those are plays that just have to be made. You know, if they're made, we win the game. You know, so uh, we've got to we've got to be creative. We've got to find a way to you know we you know we've got to find a way to block people because we missed a couple blocks. We've got to find a way not to necessarily run into the teeth of the defense. Sometimes you can. We have many times we've run the ball right downhill into the teeth of, teeth of a goal line defense and scored. You know, and your back puts it in there. You know, uh, but we didn't do that in this game. Uh, I'm not sure why they overturned the Lamar touchdown. You know, I don't know what evidence they had to overturn it, but they did. So you got to score on the next play, and um, we've got to do a better job as coaches. I think you know, you know, getting the right play up or doing something to, that they don't expect. Obviously, sometimes you want to challenge them too. You know, and we challenged them and they won in that situation on that series. And then this next one, kind of the same thing. You know, and uh, there's no there's no reason for that. Both of those fourth you know downs should have been should have been successful for us. John, was uh, Miami doing things to make it really difficult to get the two of? Because even when you guys had a big lead and you know they were out of special situations, he was able to make a lot of plays and without you guys being able to get them on the ground. Yeah, uh, two things. I think the ball was coming out really fast. You know, I mean, he wasn't really allowing himself to get sacked. He, and he dropped a couple out there, kind of threw him up a little bit up for grabs and completed a couple, especially at the end. You know, everybody gets a little tired. Uh, and then uh, he was a pretty pretty elusive in there at times too. You know, more so than. Uh, we would have wanted, you know, we got to get him down. We have a chance to get him down. He got outside of us one time to his right on a boot early in the game. We should have had him down. So, so yes, the answer is yes. We saw, uh, but I think Owe was just destructive sometimes this summer. And he's been fairly quiet, but when you watch, are they chipping on him? Are they, are they doubling him a lot coming in? What, what do you see with, against him? No, I think the ball came out fast, and then he's got to play better, you know, like, like all of us do. You know, got to coach better, got to play better, and got to make yourself, got to make a name for yourself out there. You know, you got to go do it. John, after watching the game again this morning, um, what, what did you see from Lamar early on in those first three quarters? I mean, uh, I guess, you know, the, the clip that he was operating at, uh, specifically that second quarter and third quarter. Well, I mean, I just think Lamar played a really good game. I mean, there's going to be a couple things that we looked at. You know, obviously the snap, you know, obviously he's going to be really mad about that. I'm going to probably share that with him, you know. And... Uh, one or two checks that we look at that will nuance and say, hey, maybe go the other way. But, you know, 98% of it was outstanding, and I thought he played an exceptionally good football game. On that, on that one play in the second half where he, he was rolling and he threw the ball to Likely and Likely didn't catch it, did you think he was thrown off by the fact there was a flag on the field that they ended up picking up? Like, did, what was your sense of what happened on that play? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question for Lamar. I don't know if he saw the flag or not. Um, Obviously, that's, that's one that would have been big for us. You know, a completion would have been huge right there, to your point. Uh, I'm not sure. So, John, there's a lot of talk about the health of the secondary. Just in general, you feel like you could get a couple guys back there Sunday? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a good chance we'll get some guys back, you know, and um, we should get stronger back there, you know, with Marlon and Marcus and a guy or two may come back. Okay. Thanks, Okay, thanks. All right.